Ever feel like the world's throwing a vocabulary test at you? Woke, cancel culture, microaggressions. It's enough to make your head spin. Today, let's untangle some of these terms and see why the conservative right is pushing back against them. But don't worry, we're not here to sling mud. Instead, let's focus on building bridges while standing firm in our beliefs. First off, let's be clear. Pushing back against certain ideas doesn't mean we hate the people who hold them. We just don't want certain ideologies forced upon us. Being traditional can feel like you're constantly swimming upstream. But hey, salmon do it and they're delicious. Let's dive in. Imagine this. The plane you are on is having problems and the weather is really bad. Who do you want at the controls? The pilot with the most retweets on social media or the one who aced flight school? Yeah, that's what we thought. That thought alone could make you sweat, right? Conservatives believe in rewarding hard work and skill, not just checking identity boxes. Now, that doesn't mean we're against diversity. It's like a good pizza, you want a variety of toppings, but you gotta have a solid crust, merit, to hold it all together. Meritocracy, a concept so simple yet so contentious in today's climate. The idea is straightforward. You work hard, develop your skills, and earn a position based on your merits, not identity politics. Conservatives champion meritocracy because it rewards diligence, perseverance, and talent. Imagine a heart surgeon who landed their job based solely on their expertise and experience. That's the kind of reassurance we crave when our lives are on the line. When people are rewarded based on their merits, all of society benefits from their skills, knowledge, and dedication. It's not about exclusion. It's about recognizing and valuing hard work. Meritocracy doesn't ignore diversity either. It welcomes it. If a black woman has more skills than a white man, she should get the job. If a man is a better kindergarten teacher than a woman, let him teach. Meritocracy is colorblind, gender neutral, and all about getting the best person into the job. It's just common sense. When we prioritize merit over identity politics, we build a more skilled, efficient, and innovative society. Next, let's talk about tolerance. Look, we all have our quirks. Maybe your uncle wears socks with sandals or your grandma collects porcelain cats. No judgment. The point is, in a free society, we gotta live and let live, right? People of color and LGBT individuals already have legally defined equality and freedom, and that's great. But so do traditional people with traditional beliefs. Just as the LGBT community has the right to live freely, so do those who hold religious, traditional, or conservative views. Freedom means respecting everyone's rights, not just the ones we agree with. And that's the tricky part. Tolerance is a two-way street. You wouldn't want someone shoving kale smoothies down your throat, would you? Unless you're into that. The same goes for woke or progressive ideals. Let's have respectful conversations, not thought policing and censorship. Sure, we should be tolerant of LGBT individuals, but they also need to respect the beliefs of those of us with traditional values. After all, tolerance doesn't mean forcing one group's views on another. It's about living in harmony with our differences. It is not the government's or corporation's place to propagandize its citizens into compliance. Stay in your lane. Imagine a world where everyone is free to express their beliefs without fear of backlash or discrimination. That's the kind of world conservatives strive for, one where a Christian baker can refuse to make a cake for a same-sex wedding without being sued, and where people can share their beliefs with others without demands of compliance. Freedom of thought, religion, and speech are crucial to a free society, and we should all be able to live without compromising our values in spite our differences. We don't have to agree on everything, nor should we, but it does mean we should not allow the forcing of woke or progressive ideology upon our children or society. Parents should not need to counteract the indoctrination in our public schools. Schools are for educating and preparing our kids for a prosperous and rewarding future, not undermining the family unit. Now let's move on to the gender war. We all recognize that biological men and women have unique attributes. It's why we have women's sports and locker rooms. But some progressive ideals clash with our desire to maintain fairness and safety. Conservatives believe that these differences should be respected and protected. Think about the women's sports category. It was created to give female athletes a level playing field and to celebrate their unique skills and talents. But when biological males who identify as female are allowed to compete as real women, it creates an unfair advantage. Women shouldn't be penalized for their biology, nor should they have to compromise their safety and privacy in their locker rooms, bathrooms, or even prisons for that matter. 
Imagine your younger sister training tirelessly for her high school track competition, only to lose to a biological male who identifies as female. It's not about being anti-trans. It's about protecting women's rights and opportunities. In everyday life, women shouldn't be forced to share private spaces with biological males. Young girls must be protected from exposure to male genitalia in women-only spaces. It's not about being transphobic. It's about protecting women's rights, opportunities, and dignity. They comprise 50% of the people on the planet. Furthermore, some people take advantage of self-identification policies to gain access to vulnerable spaces. Statistics show a rise in sexual assaults and indecent exposure in women's spaces since they allowed the intrusion of biological males. We need to prioritize the safety of this vulnerable majority. Conservatives understand that transgender individuals face their own set of challenges and believe that they should be treated with respect and compassion. However, we must also recognize the rights and vulnerabilities of true women and ensure the safety and innocence of childhood is protected. Another key aspect of conservative values that are under attack is the importance of strong families. This country was built on the foundation of families working together to create a brighter future for their children. Family units are essential for raising the next generation and instilling the values that hold our society together. While progressives might argue that traditional family structures are outdated, conservatives recognize that they provide stability, love, and support that children need to grow into responsible, productive adults. Strong families create strong communities, and strong communities build a strong nation. Our birth rates have been steadily dropping, now well below replacement level. This is a symptom of the slow degradation of our society and should be addressed to maintain our culture and strength. If we can turn this country's fortune around and direct more resources to encourage having children, more young people will have the confidence to marry and start the most rewarding adventure of their lives, starting a family. In summary, it's crucial to find common ground while still holding true to our values. The woke agenda often portrays conservatives as heartless, but in reality, we believe in personal responsibility and genuine compassion. Live and let live. Let's encourage open, rational conversations and listen to each other without resorting to name-calling or canceling. We're all in this world together. So let's treat each other with kindness and respect. Thank you for watching this to the end. I hope some of this resonated with you. Please share your thoughts on these topics in the comment section below and subscribe for more content like this.